Hello, folks. Uh, we are ready to start. Um, my name is Walid. I'm very excited and I, I love coming here, and I hope you are the same. Uh, it was really awesome this morning, the inspiration talks we had. Uh, made me want to change my slides, but I don't have time to do them. I tried, but I couldn't. Okay, so I am working as a system administrator for HBC, large clusters, uh, for a Middle Eastern company. I started interest on configuration management since 2007 yeah, on CF Engine. I had lots of issues with the SSL and stuff like that. In 2012, we started the proof of concept between Chef, Bobbitt, Ansible, and CF Engine. We sent two guys for training. They come back, they say, install Ansible. Uh, I have three lovely kids. I wanted to call them Ned, Dev, and Ops, but their mother didn't take it. Uh, the last three months, I was approached by our network management team. They wanted to automate. So they wanted for me to be with, working with them, along with them, to evaluate automation. Okay, so what's the agenda? The agenda is really scattered thoughts, but it's based on the main key, the main key takeaway, what to do or how not to fail automation. And uh, what kind of things that you need to do, like now for automation, for configuration management, you are blueprinting your server, you are blueprinting your application. Yes, or you are blueprinting your infrastructure as code. But how to blueprint the process itself? So this is the main goal. I couldn't achieve it, but that's the direction I wanted to do. So the agenda is basically what motivations motivated me to work with the network team, and what may, might motivate you? Observation and hints of what not to do and what to do. Uh, the proposed software solution. Is there other solution other than software? And it's actually what we hear this morning. It's about propagating the word. The more, the, another key takeaway, when you go back, spread the word to your vendors, be it automation vendors or network vendors, that you want automation, you want programmability for the network infrastructure. To your teams, your uh, network team, your management, the purchasing team, okay? There are certain things for network automation that you have to have in place before you can start. So you need to go back and spread the word. Yes, peace. So what was my motivation? My motivation was Kubernetes. Why? Because I have to say Kubernetes in the slide. No, it's really actually because the Kubernetes networking is really awesome. You could say it's just IB tables. There was a talk actually uh, this afternoon about networking and containers and Kubernetes and the issues and how you do testing. So uh, Kubernetes has lots of networking topics. And as an operation guy, I would like to know more. And I thought that if I accept this assignment, I will know more about Envy, uh, Envoy, I will know more about Calico, I will know more about HTO, Service Mesh, and all these nice things, or at least Cube Proxy. This was my motivation. But if you look at it, what's the heart of Kubernetes? It's not really the networking, it's making the application deployment easier. The, it's, it's not meant for us operation, it's meant for the end user, the developer. So basically, the most important thing, as they said this morning, it's the human. Okay, and which human we are targeting? We are targeting the application user. Application is king. But the king of kings for this application is basically the human. I don't have a trigger. Another motivation, Project Calico. By default, when you have a network plugin, it's usually, it's usually flannel. Yes? But uh, Kubernetes is very modular and you can change the network and you can have more than one network plugin. And one of the awesome network plugins that is used by GitHub, by Yahoo, by lots of companies in a greater scale and it shows that SDN really works. Who knows what SDN stands for? What does it stand for, Igor? Software defined networking. Wrong. Who knows what SDN stands for? Yes, I want. Later, later, not. Uh, 
SDN st stands for still do nothing. <laughs> In the enterprise, nobody uses SDN. It's Google, it's the big hyperscalers, it's the cloud companies. But in the enterprise, you don't see much adoption of the SDN. True adoption of SDN is on the cloud, on the containers, on this new modern environment, microservices and stuff like this. <laughs> so, networking, this is an awesome statement from Nigel Creston. And it shows the commitment of Public Lab on the automation for network. This is his predictions for the this year, 2018, and I love it. I cannot put it beautifully as he did. I really like it. So what he's saying, saying this year is the network automation year. We will see continuous integration, we'll see continuous development for network devices, for network setups. This is, this is another motivation. The other motivation was last week. I attended an event last week, and this gentleman, Sven, from the company called The Glue, he presented microservices, microservices like 101. And he basically works for FinTech Consultancy, and this is the architecture that they deploy to their clients. Can you check, basically, each, each square, each blue square is a container, is a microservice. Okay, so this is two data centers. Another data center, which is an arbiter, uh, just for split brain decisions. Uh, let's say each data center has three hosts. Imagine if it is 10 hosts. Imagine if it's 100 hosts, 1,000 hosts. Imagine that each host has hundreds of containers. How would the network setup be? Imagine one host goes down. These containers, they want to load balance with the other data centers. How the workflows will be? This is how complicated networking will be. Who's going to manage this? Is it us, the system administrator? Is it the developer? Is it the end user? Who is it? A new site reliability engineer, container reliability engineer, CRV, I don't know what. I don't know. So how do we start our journey? We have to focus on three areas. Human, the process, and the technology. Which area you think we should focus on most? It's always eager. <laughs> it's the human. If we make a mistake with if we make a mistake choosing technology, it's just the technical depth we have to change it. If we make a mistake of using a different process, we can change it, but we cannot change the human. And the human here, the people, is what is the culture, the mindset, and the behavior. We have to start with this first. Which culture? It could be the end user. It could be the team that are working on automation. The stakeholder, who is directly related to this automation activity. Okay, so we need to really take care of the human. How we do we take care of a human? I don't know. Uh, you saw um, Marco talk. He pointed to certain things. There's lots of talks pointed to certain things. It's very difficult to deal with the human. As Marco said, just don't be the jerk, that's all. Okay, so let me give you some context. So we are starting a journey, and this journey is another milestone. We already have the system automation in place, we already have some automation in place, but we want to continue. We want to be, as Luke said, pervasive. Yes? So we need to know the context, we need to know the scope of work. So this company, let's say Acme, has a campus of nine buildings has four data centers spread, world, spread around 10 kilometer radius. And it, it is medium scale in terms of network. It's medium scale, it's less than 200 network devices, but they are heterogeneous. Junibar, Cisco, HB, Aroba, different devices. And they are all legacy except of Junibar. Juniper have a, a, protocol, uh, a network protocol that allows configuration. It's called NetConf. We'll come to this later. And they also have some other system related to this, like a DNS appliance, like a CMDB. Uh, they have monitoring using SNMB. Okay, so there are, basically this is the company. It's a legacy. It's a traditional company. 
with bureaucracy, levels of bureaucracy. Yes? So, knowing the context, we want to know what kind of automation is best suited for them. So, as Adam said today, this morning, there, there was the first automation innovation was the cut and paste. Yes? So basically there is an automation method called cut and paste. The other one that network engineers have adopted is basically they took whatever we have, whatever system and application have, they adopted it as it is. They extended it maybe a little, but they did. And there is a talk tomorrow by Mirka, yes, regarding what is called event-based solutions. So Mirka is actually today, at two, at, at, after this talk, there is a talk by Mirka uh, regarding event-driven uh, event automation. The other one, which is in the future, but it is, we already have it. We have it as an open source and we have it commercially, which is called, called intent-based uh, networking. Do you know what they mean by intent-based networking? It, it is the desired state. What we, de what we declare as desired state, they say, oh, let's call it something different. It's intent-based. But they add to it more. Some people, of, some networking companies, some networking solutions, add machine learning, add statistical modeling, so they add a lot to it. Yes? So which one do you think we are running? We are running the first one, yes, the cut and paste. It's manual, it's cut and paste, it's serial. What I mean by serial, we are cautious. So we do one device at a time. And it's error prone, so we have job security. A white box company is taking the mic out of us and they said networking, Management haven't changed in the last 20 years. And actually, network management haven't changed in the last 20 or 30 years. Is this true or not? It depends. Why we are not automating? So now, you already know that you have a target. You have to choose one management trend or strategy, and you have to adapt it. But then you'll be facing with the human. Okay, and you need to know what kind of answers you're going to give them. But you need to be prepared. So what kind of questions or answers they will give you of when you ask somebody why you are not automating. So these are the type of questions, these are the type of answers you will get. Look, we are operations. Let's think about today. Let's solve today's problem before I solve tomorrow's problem. Yeah? I don't have four hands. Uh, Cisco, I am Cisco CCIE. I have been in this industry for 20 years. None of my friends does automation. Cisco t taught us that I log into a device, I log one device at a time. I got my CCIE logging into one device at a time. And that's how I get my CCIE. So basically the vendor is responsible. We are responsible. And these are some of the questions, some of the answers that you might face. So, this is one use case of a senior engineer trying to do automation using Visual Basic. Do you like the user interface? Hmm? So he spent one month between learning Visual Basic and he did lots of mistakes. And he's a brilliant engineer. He's the most senior engineer in the network team. He's the hub of knowledge for the network team when it comes to networking. But when it comes to automation, there are serious uh, fallbacks. First, he never used any development tools. He never used user interface design tools, Git, version control, linting, anything. And maybe he used the wrong language. There are templating engines. Why doesn't he use a template engine? He could have done it in a day. Why didn't he ask a developer? Yes? So ask before you do something. Ask around you. Don't jump into something. The other thing, he expected that uh, his solution will cover all our heterogeneous environment. It didn't. 
because there are differences. So don't expect to boil the ocean. Okay, start small. Start like one platform at a time, or one switch at a time, one model at a time. So there is lots of examples you can learn from this one. Okay, so now we had the failed project, and we want to start another failed project. Uh, sorry, another project, but hopefully we will not fail. Yes? So how do you start? Communication. Communication, 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 always and always. Okay, start with brainstorming. And the reason for this brainstorming, two things. You need to make your team aware, and you need to listen to them. And listen, 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 like Adam Jacob said today. Listen and understand. And listen carefully. If you want to create the future of automation in your company, listen and understand. So what things? Like NetOps, NetDevOps. They never heard about it before. So you basically trigger the curiosity. If you can trigger this, this is a change in behavior. This is culture. Okay? You want to know what task you want to attack. You want to know the timeline. You want to know who's busy, who's not. You want to know what resources they have, what tasks and responsibilities they do. So basically, in the brainstorm, make it free, make it open, and have one, two, three, and shadow them during changes. Shadow them during what they are working daily. Try to find issues, try to find challenges. And don't ever say problems, always say challenges. It's much nicer. And you need to win your management acceptance. You need to get the buy-in. How do you do that? Find an opportunity or a pressing need that the company needs and use it to your advantage. And there's a lot. Companies, they need scale, they need agility, they need security, they need compliance. All of the objectives of business can be satisfied by automation. Just find the one that is highest priority in their agenda. And you need to find tasks. So hopefully, you find tasks from the interview, from the brainstorming sessions. If not, there is a community, a very active and very nice community, Network to Code. They did a survey in 2016, and this is some of the results of the survey. And you look, when you look at the four top, yes, you see configuration, archive, backup. Configuration generation, basically templating. So automation is not just configuration. Reporting, deploy. So select an easy one, don't select the complex one. If you want to fail, select the complex one. Select the one that will black out your data center or black out section of your network. Start with the easy read ones. Okay, so what are the top 10 or top two traditional issues? This is the problem. Now you selected the easiest one, you go back to your network team, you say, ah, oh, no, 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 no. Spanning tree. Man, spanning tree means configuration. It means actually I can block out, I can black out a section of my network. Try to resist. Resist as much as possible. No write, no spanning tree as a first project. The second one, VLANs. Forget it. Not from the beginning, okay? So what do you do? You collected some tasks, you prioritize them according to complexity, according to implementation risk, okay? You want, to, you want to find the highest value, highest value in terms to the team, in terms to the, te to the business, not in terms to you. And start with them. Like in this case, setting DNS, setting NTP, setting syslog, setting SNMB, this helps in monitoring, this helps in security. So it is very good value, especially for the SOC team. Yes, it's very good value for the business team. It's very good value for compliance. It's a business objective. So start with something that is read and will have high value. Again, don't start with the complex thing. And as they said this morning, if you say, I want to finish it in a week, most likely it will take at least a week. So, I want to be like Mark and Lucas and Adam. So this is it, history, yeah? 
So we have a rich history, really. I mean, I am optimistic. I see system and application configuration management were pragmatic in solving the problem. We had a rich history, we had a good community, we had a very good culture, and this is a proof of it. The ones that read is my tribal loyalty. So I am tribal to these ones that read. Uh, notice that we started in 1993 and we are still continuing. We don't know where we're we going, but hopefully we're going to a good direction. Network have the same history. They have actually maybe better history than us. Why? They are more into standards. They are more into protocols. Now, Chef and Civil Puppet, CF Engine, they don't need to interoperate with each other. Network, they need to. They need to be unified, okay? So, SDN, this is a good paper, by the way, if you want to read it. The road to SDN started very early and started by programmable networks, but we don't see them on the enterprise. Why? I don't know. If we look deep, okay, into network history programmability, you see several trends. First, it's not all software. Yeah, for example, the ones in red is related to devices. Everybody knows OpenWRT, the wireless programmable device. Uh, SDN, uh, the Ethernet fabric, instead of the traditional three core, you have the uh, Ethernet fabric, uh, leaf and spine. Now, SNMP and NetConf, this is monitoring and management protocols. Is this good or bad? It depends. Networking community think it's good. Thinks basically the same protocol used for monitoring is the same protocol used for configuration management. SNMB failed us. Why did it fail us? Because it's supposed to be the management protocol. And it started in 1993, same year as CF Engine. But it's as simple. Network is complex these days. So, now you want to start? Do you start in production? No, you build your own test environment. These are good products to build your test environment. You need, if you need Cisco images, you have to get them from viral. GNS3 and EVE next generation, you can create a lab, you can create a lab on your laptop. VRNet lab is a networking lab using containers, but you still need the images from the vendor. Okay, so we have a lab, but we haven't selected what automation framework we need. So again, the network to code community, they have made a survey, and this is the result of the survey. The top two tools on the list is Git, version control, and Ansible, because Ansible doesn't stand in your way. Exactly that, they wanted the tool, they are not developers. They wanted something that looks familiar to them and doesn't stand in their way. But you have to be careful. If you are, how many Ansible users here? How many Ansible's tribe? You tribal to Ansible, you love Ansible? Okay. So if you use Ansible, you have to take care about your community, about the team that you are working with. Use version control. Use testing. Okay? Don't just use Ansible without setting the standards within the team. Set, for example, the directory structure. Follow certain consistent rules between you and your team. And go for the small wins. Try one thing at a time, yes? And just improve one thing at a time and learn one thing at a time and do this every day. Yes, don't complicate it. Don't go for the complicated one. No VLANs. Eh? So the solution proposed is this one. Uh, basically, uh, the, the team is mostly Windows users. So VS Code is good for them as an editor. Because moving uh, somebody from Notepad to any editor is good enough. And the version control, 
GitLab. And GitLab serves other purposes in the future, like continuous integration and stuff like this. Yeah? And automation framework, Ansible, and specifically Ansible AWX or Ansible Tower. Because it's an easy user interface, you have role-based access control, and you have surveys, so, we, so you don't stand in their way. So what was the first project? Just changing the editor, very simple. And if you think about it, just this change allows them to validate ACLs. You can see the ones in red, these are the dangerous ones. So very quick visual look at the ACLs, he knows, oh, I did the mistake. Yes, so start simple. You don't have to do a complicated thing, no VLANs. <laughs> Recommendations. So I said, the network world is different than us. We care about software. They care about topology. They care about uh, hardware. How many people know the refresh cycle for a network device? Is it five years? 10 years? 15 years? 20? No answers? 10. 10? Yes. It's from 7 to 10. In the last two years, some are 5 to 7. So you need to attack this. Because 10 years means that you cannot catch up with technology. You are at slow base, which makes you stable. They want stability. So what do you do? One proposal is that instead of investing on expensive hardware, vendor proprietary hardware, let's go for white boxes, QMLS, BK8, whatever. Yes? We will save fifth, we'll save basically uh, fifth of the price. Basically, we'll pay fifth of the price. And the saving, we can invest it back onto the people. We can invest the saving back into the human, training them, okay? Giving them compensation or whatever. How many use GRBC? Do you know what it stands for? Okay. Uh, how many use PPRBC? It's basically... Premium people require premium compensation. Invest in your human. So try to uh, question and try to bring ask, ask questions. Nag them. Why we are still on the three-tier architecture? Why don't we go to fabric architecture? Why don't we go to spine leaf? Why don't we get uh, white boxes and stuff like this? Because if the decision they take now is going to affect you seven, ten years later. You don't want seven, ten years later that you are still stuck, you cannot automate. You want to work on three parallel axes. The technology, the hardware, the topology, and the software. Yes? So the topology, try to go to spine and leaf and understand the spine and leaf advantages. Now, why Ansible? Because Ansible doesn't stand in your way. One way, for example, uh, to configure the device, network device in Ansible using the vendor modules. So this is will set up the NTP server. You see the difference between Juniper and the other two. Do you think the network engineer will like this one? Is it easy to understand? I think it is easy. How about that one? This is Ansible again, but this is using a special protocol, NetConf. This is the protocol recommended by the engineering task force, the Internet Engineering Task Force. Do you think the network engineer would like that? Yeah? yeah? yeah. I thought so, XML. I don't like XML. The network engineer won't like XML. It depends. So basically, if you do the the Ansible way, not standing in their way, they can still use Ansible like what they call uh, standard operating procedure, where they have commands, they type, and templates they type. So basically, Ansible will be their documentation engine, templating engine. 
and it will not stand in the way. This is the first step. Later step, you can go for the other configurations. And you can go for roles and other complicated stuff. <laughs> Configuration Management 101. There is two things, desired state and current state. I want my current state to be my desired state. So this is an example of how it is done in the network. So we said the configuration protocol is netconf. And netconf is heavy because it uses SSH over board 830. So, and it was developed in 2006. Recently, there is a new protocol, restconf, which uses HTTP. It's lightweight, and you can use both. Now, both protocols, uh, better you can. Both protocols uh, use a data modeling language. Dead. What kind of battery is it? I don't know. This kind. How do you take it on? Oh. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> uh, while we change the battery? All I wanted to say is that when you t uh, it's good to get assigned to another team. We always talk about DevOps and stuff like this. But unless you practice it and you move to another team, you wouldn't really see the difference. We are different mindsets. The first time when I went to the network team, I was going to do it the declarative way the, uh, and the neutral way. I will not use like a vendor-based uh, modules from Ansible. But then I found that it's hard on the network engineers. So you have to be the network engineer. Don't be the system automation engineer. Yeah? Think as they think and introduce changes as small as possible, one change at a time. So start with the vendor modules, not an issue. The moment they get accustomed and used to network modules, you can move them to the uh, standard network protocol like NetConf and whatever, okay? So this is what the vendors and the engineering task force wants. They want NetConf, RESTConf, and Yang. Yang is a data modeling language. You can describe anything. You can describe a system, you can describe a network, you can describe a movie, you can describe anything with it. It's very powerful. And that's the problem. So, I've been Babianak, a 30 year CCIE and a data center architect, a podcaster. He's like a man of all trades. He's so frustrated last week because the vendor didn't get it yet. There is Standard, there is protocols, the protocol since 2006, but still, the vendors, they don't get it. They will implement different implementation, they will uh, favor their own application programming interfaces, APIs, and stuff like this. NetConf, all you need to know about the NetConf, it's a network configuration protocol. It can do both, it can do monitoring, and it can do configuration. It's supposed to replace SNMP but it will not. SMB will stay for monitoring and will stay a little bit for management forever. RESTConf is to help NetConf. So if somebody favors HTTP as a solution, RESTConf is the alternative. And again, the vendor will create another standard. So this is an example of how Ansible does it. So you have Ansible as the client for RESTConf or NetConf. He will talk to a device using uh, whatever protocol, RESTConf or NetConf. So if it's RESTConf, it will be over HTTP. If it's NetConf, it will be over SSH, port 83, and so on. The other thing that we don't have, they have the privilege of having three configuration storage, data stores. So they can roll back. We cannot roll back. They can. So another way, Another thing that makes Ansible the favorite network automation framework is the many ways that you can automate network with it. Yes? It's not one way. You have the Red Hat Ansible core modules. You have the vendor modules. 
You have the community modules. You have the netconf module that I showed you before. And you can do your own custom module. And that's what I did. I wanted to uh, manage an HB Aruba device. I couldn't. I wrote a Python program. Then I said, can I convert the module? One day. That's it. Just read how to do it. And it's very easy, straightforward. It's like a template. You don't even, I think for a network engineer, it will be easy to do. Especially if he has a uh, help from a developer. So hit refresh. So basically you recommended the software solution. You are nagging them for the hardware and topology solution. You are using an automation solution. You improve one thing at a time. Okay, hit refresh. The moment you do one task, review. Do you want to enhance this task or take another challenge? And so on and so on. These are good references. The best reference I have found is the community, Network to Code. It's a, they have a Slack channel. Mirka is uh, one of them, the salt stack gentleman. He was going to give a talk later and now, after this talk, on uh, salt uh, room. Yeah, uh, and there's lots. There's lots of resources on the internet. Yeah, so the key, no, the key takeaway, spread the word. Nobody cares about network automation. You have to go back to your network team, say it's easy. It's not mature maybe, but let's start one task at a time. By the time we reach the VLAN, the uh, firing policies, the difficult task, we will be there. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs>